What's going on everybody? I am a dub if you guys are new to the channel be sure to subscribe to the channel down below in today's video I'm going to show all of you a technique that I am sure most of you have not heard of It is a technique that really I haven't seen very many people do at all Haven't seen many YouTube videos on it. It is something that I do to catch fish Especially when I'm around a lot of grass. We're at a body of water today that has a ton of grass I know we're gonna catch them. The frogs are chirping. The bass are busting the surface. It's gonna be an insane day. Let's go ahead and hop into this. You guys are not gonna wanna miss out on this technique. It's gonna help you catch more bass and hopefully more bigger bass. So let's go ahead and hop on into it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my setup for how I'm going to do this technique and then I'm gonna to explain to you guys how I'm gonna rig everything up, how I'm gonna fish the bait and all of that. And then we're going to catch some fish in this pond right here next to me. There's a ton of grass. It looks beautiful. I'll show that to you guys in a minute. But let's go ahead and hop into the setup. The only hook you're gonna need is just gonna be a wide gap hook for this setup. This is just your typical weightless Texas rig. A lot of people have done it before using soft jerk baits, using stick baits, using worms, all kinds of stuff. But I'm gonna show you guys something totally different today. You've probably never done and it's definitely gonna change the game. But before I go ahead and show you guys the bait, let's go ahead and hop into the setup. I've got this set up on a rod that I actually just got in and I haven't even gotten to throw this thing yet, but it feels so, so good in my hand and I'm super excited to use this thing. This is actually a Lose Custom Speed Stick Rod. This is a 610 medium heavy with a fast tip. And I got this rod specifically for weightless baits. I generally throw my weightless baits on a bait caster. A lot of people throw them on spinning rod and that's fine. A lot of people choose a little bit of a lighter bait caster and that's fine too. But for me, I fish a weightless bait around a lot of cover. You can fish it in open water, but usually I fish it around a lot of cover and I wanna be able to get those fish out. I wanna be able to get good penetration when I set the hook. A lot of the times they're bigger fish. I've caught seven, eight pound bass on a weightless setup like this. So that rod is gonna be crucial for me. 610 so I can be really accurate with my cast. Medium heavy, and I don't want it too heavy, don't want it too light, that way I've got that backbone, I can pin those fish, and then the reel, which I'm super, super excited about, is going to be the Lose Tournament MP. This thing feels super good, it is super light, this whole setup is just amazing, like it just feels great in my hand. I'm excited to hook into a couple with this thing today. I've actually got this whole setup rigged up with some 20 pound test fluorocarbon, this is actually some Strike King Primal line, and uh, a lot of people are gonna be like, why are you throwing 20 pound test? Like I said, I'm fishing around a lot of heavy cover. I wanna be able to set the hook into those fish and rip them out. That's one thing you really can't do with a spinning rod very effectively. Um, you, you just, you can't rip them out of heavy grass. Anybody who's fished in heavy grass knows, anybody who's frog fished, all that stuff. It can be very difficult. I don't wanna throw this on straight braid. You can if you're in muddy water. A lot of times I'll throw this in clear water, but uh, I am throwing 20 pound fluorocarbon on here. And if you guys do wanna check out that line, or any of the baits I'm using today, or the sick rod and reel, I will have links in the description down below to the Lose website and the Strike King website where you guys can save money by using my code. You can check out all of this stuff on there, but let's go ahead and hop into this bait. I'm excited for this. You guys are gonna love this. So like I said, a lot of people have thrown your stick baits on here. This is a Strike King shimmy stick. They make the shimmy stick. They also make the Ochos. A lot of people have thrown a soft jerk bait. This is the Strike King Caffeine Shad. A lot of people have thrown a worm. This is a classic, the bubblegum finesse worm right here. All of these baits work awesome. I guarantee you that I can put these on my hook right now, catch a couple of bass. But this other bait that I'm about to show you, I feel like outperforms all of these in certain situations. And that bait is going to be a Strike King Game Hog. Now this is just a creature style bait and uh, a lot of people will throw these whenever they're flipping. And it is awesome for that. It's great on a Carolina rig. It's great on a lot of different things, even a wobblehead, something like that out deep. But I have not seen too many people throw this weightless up shallow. And uh, this bait right here, let me just tell you, it gets absolutely munched, especially when those bass are keying in on bluegill and bait fishing stuff up on the bank. It's just like, I'll show you guys the action in the water, but like it, it looks so good. It looks just like a little bluegill. It's really subtle, it's really finesse, and they just can't resist it. Now, there is one thing I do to improve this, so I'll go ahead and show you. Okay, so we've got our bait right here. It's just Texas rig weightless, just like I was saying. And the one thing that I do to change this thing up, especially if I'm throwing certain colors, which I'll go over in a minute, I take this stuff right here, which is just a dye. And uh, I take this and I dip these tails right here into the dye. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys that. And uh, that just really improves it. It adds a little bit of scent, adds a little bit of color, and I feel like I get more bites when I do it. So let's go ahead and do that on this green pumpkin game hog right here. Get a little dip action going down in there. And that dye normally gets on your hands after you use some of this stuff. So uh, be careful when you're using it because I spilled some of it in my boat the other day 
it does not come out very easily. It'll come off your hands, but other stuff it won't come off of, but this is really good stuff. And now colors. I've got a couple different colors I throw. I keep it pretty simple. What we're gonna start off with today is just gonna be a traditional green pumpkin. It's just a natural color, but we do have a little bit of dinginess to the water today, so I may end up switching up. If it is a little bit muddier, I will change up to a June bug. That is another super, super good color. And then I've also got two other colors that I will sometimes throw. One of those is going to be blue crawl. It is a green pumpkin with a little bit of blue in it, and the fish really, really love that. And then also this new color, which I'm actually trying out, is called Amistad Special. It looks really cool. I haven't got to use it very much, but I really, really like it. And like I said, I will have links to all of those baits down in the description below. So be sure to go check those out if you guys do want to pick up some of these. But let's go ahead, get off this camera, and go ahead and strap on the GoPro. I'm excited. I think we're going to catch a lot of fish around this grass. I'll go ahead and show you guys what this looks like. Um, it just looks amazing around the edge of this pond. Like, it is super thick grass. I know the fish are sitting in it. I'm excited. Let's go ahead, hop into it. So you can see, we've just got your traditional pond right here. Got a lot of weeds and stuff around the edge, but this right here, a fish has moved right there. You can see that. This right here is all grass. The water literally stops right here at my feet. Now right here is a little bit shallow, but out there is deeper water. And these fish will cruise the outsides of all of this grass. They'll actually get up underneath of it. And uh, they're just sitting in there. And that weightless bait, you're gonna be able to take it right on the out. You can even pull it right over the top of this stuff. It's not gonna get tangled up and they'll even blow up on it like it's a frog. Like it just works really, really good. Let's go ahead and go ahead and throw out here. We're gonna start here. We're gonna work our way down. There's grass all the way around this whole pond. And uh, certain spots are better than others. We've got some shady spots, which are definitely gonna hold more fish. But a lot of this grass does put off shade and that's good too, because they'll get right up under there and that shade is gonna be cooler water and uh, they're gonna be able to eat all kinds of bluegill and all kinds of stuff in that grass. So let's go ahead and get our old rod right here, cast it in the water. I haven't even thrown this rod yet, like I said, so I don't even know how it's set up. I need to adjust it a little bit. So if I backlash, that's probably why, but I'm excited. I think we're gonna be able to catch a good amount of fish and I think we have a chance of catching a pretty big one too. So I'm excited. Let's go ahead, take a cast out there. Oh yeah, that's money, dude. There's a lot of grass right here. I really hope there's no snakes. Really hope there's no snakes. Oh, I just missed one. Dude, I love this rod. This thing feels so good. Might have been a bluegill. That is one problem you'll run into with this sometimes is uh, the bluegill really love that chartreuse and the garlic scent. Um, so you will get some bluegill bites, but thing is, if you're getting bluegill bites, that means you're in a good area because that means there's going to be a bass nearby because that's what they're eating. And honestly, it could have been a bass. One just moved right there next to the grass where I just casted. So hopefully we'll get bit again. Yeah, that's a bluegill bite. 100%. That was a bluegill bite. I could tell. And you don't have to fish this thing around the grass. I mean, you can really fish it wherever. You could even fish it in open water if you really wanted to, and it's still going to work fine. But I like to keep it shallow. And if I can keep it around wood and grass and stuff like that, I feel like it's just way better around all that structure. They'll just come out from that structure and eat it. So we're going to make one more cast and then we're going to move spots. Dang, bluegill bit my, my little arm off on the side of this thing. But I still think they'll bite it either way. I don't think it's really going to matter. They really key in on those tails better than anything, in my opinion. Oh my gosh, my drag. That's a decent fish, too. Oh my gosh. Yep, whenever you get a new reel, make sure you set your drag. Oh, there we go. All right, not bad. Not a bad first fish at all. He's not a giant, but it's not bad. There you go, right there in the mouth. He choked that thing. There we go. Nice little guy right there. Got to give him a little bit of a toss because of this grass, but there he goes, right back in. Let's get this thing re-rigged, and then I'll show you guys how I'm fishing this thing. So number one, I need to check my drag now because I did not have it set right. I'm surprised I even hooked that fish, honestly. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm throwing it out there. I really don't let it sit for long. And then what I'll either do is I'll either move my rod or I'll pop my rod a little bit. 
or I'll just simply reel it very slow. And what that does is the bait's just sitting there horizontal in the water column. And then you're just reeling it, which is making those tails just spin. It's super subtle. And for some reason, they just really can't resist it. Like those back tails just have such a good action that the fish just love it. And it really does. I think it reminds them of a bluegill. I think that's what they think it is. And uh, I don't know, for some reason they bite it. You guys just saw, we just caught one. And I think we're gonna be able to catch another one. This grass is honestly worse than I thought. If I was in a little boat right now, it'd be so much better. But we're gonna stick with it from the bank for a little bit. There's another one. <laughs> That's like about the same size as that last one. Oh, and he's stuck in the grass. And this is why I was saying you wanna have a bait caster because with a spinning rod, that would've been hard to get out right there. There we go, fish number two. Not a giant, not as big as the last one for sure, but uh, he's a fat little healthy guy. And you can see here too, you see how he's a little bit darker? When they're darker, that means they've been sitting in all that grass and vegetation. That's a nice healthy fish right there. Let's go ahead, give him a little toss back. There she goes. And that one messed up my game hog a little bit, so let's go ahead and go get another one of these and see if we can't catch another one. All right, we are re-rigged up, same thing. Dip the tails, green pumpkin. We might end up throwing a different color. But we just caught two fish on the green pumpkin, so we're gonna keep throwing it. And uh, let's see if we can get another one. Both of those fish ate in about the same spot down here in this little cove. And uh, I really didn't even have to move it that much. And they were already on there. That was another bite I just had right there. I'm like fishing in the jungle right now. In any moment, a python could come out and bite my leg. Oh, I should get nuked down there. Yep, I knew it. <laughs> and there you go. In the grass again, like I said, got her out. They're not giants, but hey man, they are nice and healthy fish and they are a lot of fun. A lot of those bigger fish are gonna be out there in the deeper water, but when you're bank fishing, sometimes you can't hit it and you're still gonna be catching some nice fish like that. And they just love this. I don't I don't know why, man, but they just love this bait. Like for some reason, they just absolutely love it. Watch, I'm probably gonna catch another one. I called the shot on that one. Cause I made a pretty good cast and I was like, yeah, looks pretty good. I just saw another wake down there, which means there's probably another fish. I don't know if he'll bite, but there's probably another fish. Got him, another one. Dude, they're stacked right here. That is so wild. <laughs> they're literally stacked. <laughs> like, that is crazy. Look at there, another one. I mean, they're not giants at all, but uh, you keep catching some small ones and more than likely, you're gonna look into a pretty decent fish. Fish live shallow all year, especially around vegetation and cover. This isn't even my good spot. Like, this is not even my favorite spot to go to. I will say though, this spot right here is where I had my PB for the longest time when I was a kid. I grew up fishing here all the time and uh, me and my buddy Chaz were down here and we saw this fish swirl and we thought it was a carp, but I just took a, a jig and threw it near the swirl and started swimming it back, just messing around, seeing if I could make the carp spook. And then it was a seven pound bass. It was like the wildest thing ever. And uh, that was my PB for the longest time. Now it's like nine pounds. And uh, I've caught a lot of fish way over seven pounds now. But for the longest time, that was my PB and it was actually in this spot. And sometimes you'll see if I can feel the grass getting on the bait, I'll pop it a couple times and that'll usually clear that grass right off. And a lot of the times they'll eat it if there's grass on the bait, like they really just don't care. They're just looking for that movement but sometimes it does matter and I'll, I'll clear off a little bit of that grass just so that way it actually swims like it's supposed to. There's another fish. That's number five from down here. That is so crazy, man. This might be the smallest one we've caught the whole time. They're so nice and healthy though. I mean, look at how fat they are. 
Oh no, buddy. Don't go into the jungle. There might be a snake down here. I don't want to get bit. All right, quit it, Bobby. There we go. Little guy, but hey, he's healthy. All right, now. Let's get our bait rigged up again. I just want to see how many I can catch down here now. <laughs> There's so many. They're not even big. Like, I want to move spots so I can try to catch a bigger fish. But at the same time, like, every other cast I'm getting bit. So it's kind of like, hey, why would you move? Because they're still fun. I mean, they might be 12 inches, but they're still fun. All right, let's keep moving a little bit. Try a couple casts out here. You can see there's scattered grass all on this side of the pond. And there's shoreline grass, but those bass will actually get out there, usually the bigger ones too, in that main grass that's out in the middle because it's a little bit deeper. And they'll sit out there, and you can throw this around that grass too, and they absolutely smoke it. Dude, one just tried to bite me right there. I pulled it out of his mouth. No way. Literally right there. I just pulled it out of his mouth. That was a good bite too. That was a little bit of a bigger fish. Let's see if we can get him to bite it again. Right on the edge of the grass. Oh, dude. I know you guys had to see that. Oh my gosh. Now I'm in the dang tree, man. That was another bass. Somehow he didn't get it all the way. They might not be able to see this bait as good because I am throwing this green. Um, so we may end up switching up to a June bug here in a little bit. Like I was saying earlier, in the muddy water, that June bug is a very, very good color. Oh, it's a dink. It's a dink. <laughs> he just buried me in that grass, though. Wow. Absolute mega stud right here, boys. There we go. <laughs> Absolute giant. No biggins yet today, but they are biting. I think I see me a little bass right here. It might be a bluegill. I think it's a little bass. <laughs> Literally right here in front of me. Let's see if we can get him to bite. Might have been. Oh, it was a bass. <laughs> he's literally a dink. Like, he's such a small dink. I just saw him. He's probably a solid eight inches. He flashed on it, though, so I got to see him for a second. He just didn't eat it all the way because he's too small. We're going to have to change up this bait. I'll tell you that much right now. It's just torn up. We're going to try this June bug out real quick. I haven't thrown one yet today. And uh, the water is a little dingy. So we're going to give it a shot. We're going to try it. This is the spot right here. You can see grass literally everywhere. And uh, the fish usually get down here too. I like it a little bit better when it's not as thick just because it is pretty shallow down here. But I know they get in it whenever there's a ton of grass still. So I mean we should still be able to catch some. But... A little bit of open water for this bait is not bad just because then they can see it a little bit more and decide if they want to bite it or not but then also if you've got it tangled up in grass and you pop it out sometimes they'll just smoke it like that <laughs> yep that's what I was talking about that was in the grass like literally in the grass and as you can tell super dark just like all the other ones right there in the grass so apparently, they'll eat the June bug today too. Oh yeah, there's more fish sitting right here. That's where that other one bit me. I just cast it and one just spooked off. Maybe he'll come back or maybe his friend's in here. Oh, good fish. Oh, he's not even that good, man. He scared me. I don't even know what number that is, but that would be another fish. Oh, 
There's another one right there. I hadn't even moved the bait yet. And he was just on there. <laughs> it's so wild, dude. I haven't caught this many fish out of this pond in forever. Like, they usually don't bite this good. It's crazy, man. They just love this bait today. Let's go down here and try this other spot. This corner has not been super, super productive. I think this other corner down here, though, will be good. It doesn't look like it's as jammed up. So, uh, let's here give it a shot. Why not? All right, so I got the big camera set up now, too, and uh, still got the GoPro on. The lighting's really not that great right here, but we're just gonna have to deal with it. I think I can catch a couple right here. Don't know how big they'll be, but I think I can catch a couple. So let's go ahead, try to get on one. There we go. Just following it in. There we go. Started reeling it in and uh, he bit it, so he must have been following it. Little guy. See you, Junior. Oh my gosh. Yikes. This is probably one of the ones I've been seeing swim around. This is a baby. I just yeeted him. Absolute giant. Goodness gracious. All right, that's the last spot we're gonna hit for today. Well, that is a wrap on today's video. We didn't catch any giants, but we did catch a good amount of fish. That's kind of what I was expecting. Usually I can pull off one big fish had a couple miss it. I don't know how big they were. I'm not going to say they were giants because I really don't know. Um, but we did catch some nice like pound and a half fish. And uh, if you just want to go out and have some fun, this technique is the perfect way to do it. They absolutely love it, especially in ponds. But I will say, even at lakes, they absolutely love it. I mean, you can try it basically anywhere. River, creek, pond, lake, whatever. And they're probably going to bite it. I mean, I like to do it personally around a lot of grass and a lot of structure. But you can do it just up shallow on rock or whatever it may be they're still gonna bite that bait they really love it and i uh, hope you guys got a couple tips out of today's video and maybe i've convinced you to try this technique on your home body of water like i said if you guys do want to check out the baits that i was using today i was catching all of those fish on the strike king game hog um, i will have it in the description down below with a 10 percent off code so you can check those out green pumpkin is what i was using at the beginning june bug after that and I'll leave all my favorite colors down there in the description for you guys. I'm gonna head back to the house now. Dinner's ready, and I caught a couple bass. I'm feeling good. I've been at the beach for about a week, and I uh, haven't set the hook on a bass in a long time, and I got to do it today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. A-Dub out.